Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Alpha Hole Prison. So, last time we got sent to the hole, or maybe I should say um, solitary confinement for a little while, and we also got thrown an alien naughty magazine, and Miguel pleasured himself to it almost instantly for some reason. We were also forced to be naked in there for some reason. And Miguel just happily started pleasuring himself to the magazine and and then Veritas was watching the whole time and said nice at the end when we finished. It, a lot I don't also this this music track is this not is this music track not the same one, or at least one of the tracks from To Trust an Incubus? I think it is. I think it is. Or at least it's similar to one of them. Or maybe Vista Versatile? I'm not sure. That sucked and I barely had time to finish all my widgets when I got back. At least it's over now. Hey, oh, whoops. Hey. Veritas told me you received solitary. Yeah, I was gone a whole day. Yeah, it sucked. Did it really? I placed your commissary items in your bin, so no one would be tempted to steal them. Really? Thanks. It occurred to me yesterday that I missed you, Miguel. Oh, yeah? Let's keep our separations to a minimum. Agreed. I suppose you wish to continue your quest to relate to me. Yeah, I was thinking about it a lot while I was in solitary. Proceed. You told me about how your whole planet turned against you and sent you here. It sounds like a legend, something too huge to be real. That's what I mean when I say I can't relate to you. Then let me make that aspect of my history real to you. Okay. I resided in a tower, the tallest of our world, and there I had a staff who saw to my every comfort. Leaders would come to me at times to seek my guidance or approval, the latter because when I condemned one of them, they would fall from power at once. It all still is sounding larger than life. Hush and listen. There was a leader named Dom Reed. Something about him triggered dislike in me. I made that clear by refusing his visits many times. I cared not if I angered him. He was beholden to me, his god. Or he should have been. Dom Reed excelled in making decisions that would displease me, but he sold them to the masses in a way that made it seem as though he had my approval. Politics like that are relatable. <laughs> this silver tongue of his allowed him to grow in popularity and attain the highest seat of our government. It was then that I had no choice but to accept his visits. I sought to put him in his place, to demand his twisted falsehoods to come to an end, but Dom Reed had charm in addition to his cunning. He humbled himself before me and pretended to seek the guidance I offered him. He played the innocent fool, exposing his insecurities to me, exalting me for how great I was compared to him. I became flattered. The one accursed meeting, a meeting that lasted four days, that's what sealed my downfall. When he returned from my tower, he pretended he didn't wish to speak of our meeting, by not reporting at once, he raised the concerns of all. Once he captured the interests of the masses, he feigned grief and disenchantment. Little by little, he pushed the message that I was an ancient relic who would never allow Hernimer to prosper. He did this with such cleverness, such strategy. He knew how to make fools of my world begin to doubt me, then pity me, and then turn away from me completely. This manifested over the course of three years. I, who had existed eons, paid little interest. Men like Dom Reed were transient, but I was eternal. 
Even if a generation could be seduced by him, the next would have a revival of faith. I did nothing but watch, wait, and sneer. My inaction granted him a path to the ultimate betrayal. There would be no new generation to become enchanted by me once more. I was disposed of. Dom Reed, the adversary I so underestimated, destroyed me in one accursed move. That's horrible. How did they do it? I've told you how. I mean, how did they get you to this prison? You're so powerful. With the aid of the Salix, they created machines to subdue me and launch me into space. It's not like Visgoth. Even I could break free from the craft. Wait, I'm not like Visgoth. Even if I could break free from the craft, the vacuum of space would end me. Visgoth can survive the vacuum of space? Uh. What are you going to do, Rex, when you go back? Do you even need to ask? I'm going to have my revenge. Her nomer will be leveled by my hands. But they're machines. I'm ready for their toys now. I don't see how he could be. You're going to destroy the whole world? I'll destroy all but the few faithful who still remain. But you said yourself that people were fools. The generation on that world now aren't even the same ones who betrayed you. But did they rescue me? Did they make wrong, right the wrongs of their ancestors? Did they know? My government knew, even if my people think me a myth. Then shouldn't you just destroy the government? You do not know the depth of my rage. I'm not going to- I'm not going to presume to give you advice, I'm just thinking about your future. You're the god of Hernomer, and that's where you're going to stay when you get out, right? That is the only place for me in this universe. Do you want to stay in a world that's completely destroyed? Those few worshippers who are left, will they be enough to serve you in your tower like before? Or will they have to focus all their energy on rebuilding? I think you should topple the government. That would be enough to show everyone your back and to teach them about the betrayal. If you're merciful to the people who aren't part of it, then they then you'd have more worshippers. You'd have people to lead. Isn't that what's best? Think about it. After you've had your revenge, do you just want to sit in the rubble, or do you want to have a world to rule? So you consider the total revenge I seek two-dimensional, like your cartoon character. Now that we've gotten into it... I admit, I've thought of nothing but vengeance. I think not of the after, of what my immortal life will be when my rage is quelled. I will consider your words, pilot. Thanks, and you've given me a lot to think about too. Do you relate to me now? Yeah, you've given me a lot to think about, such as how you're about to become a mass murdering maniac. Well, I guess he probably was already that. He's probably already killed plenty. Um, how could I relate to anything in that story? I still haven't found what I'm looking for, but I like getting to know you in the meantime. Hmm. Attention inmates, the ban on walking alone in the quarters has been lifted. Have you actually captured that disgusting thing? Proceed with caution. Does that mean they got the monster? They haven't. They assume things are fine since there's been no attacks for several days. How does he know? Let's eat our breakfast together. Sure. He looks so happy. Mm, this is funky. We haven't heard this track before, have we? I can make these widgets on autopilot now. My hands know what to do. It's become a monotonous it's become monotonous and boring. But I guess it's a good thing. It means I'm falling into a routine. I'm getting closer to Rex later every day. It's nice. Even if I don't relate to him, I like him. I look forward to talking to him. I've even come to trust him. It makes this place so much more bearable for me. We've really submitted. But do I relate to him? No. There's a there's that barrier between us of mighty god versus puny human. He's still kind of unreal. If I could just find a way to connect to him, then I'd fall in love. God, you really want to fall in love with him. I don't know why I want that. We'll be out of here soon. Separated. 
He's become important to me. There's no turning back on that, but we could become the concubine of the god of Hernomer. I could use more sex, too. Ugh. He doesn't have much of an appetite. Maybe I'll put the moves on him tonight. Oh my god. Just thinking about it makes me smile. What is wrong with you, Miguel? Is this some kind your of Stockholm Syndrome? Warming after a long day. You know what? The music is too loud. I altered it because when the voices aren't out, the music is too low. But when the voices are out, the music is too loud. You know? I'm always looking forward to being with you. Is that so? And yet you still don't relate to me. In fact, I could almost lower it again. Like, I'm sorry. There. I think I figured it out. But it's like, the music always sounds different to me when I'm editing, and compared to when I'm playing, and it always sounds like the levels are balanced completely differently. Hmm. I thought about the things a god has in common with a man. Such as? Emotions. I see. Can I press you on some things? I think I'll finally get what I'm looking for. Then you must. Tell me about the last time you were happy. That was on the day you chose me as your protector. Oh. Really? That's so sweet. <laughs> Tell me about the last time you were sad. But doesn't... Isn't there a sort of implication in there that between us selecting him as, his, as our protector and now... He hasn't even had one happy day with us since? Like, that's a little bit worrisome. Like, uh, did anyone catch that? I caught that. Very well. You are worthy to know. Like, what the hell's wrong with us? Are we not what we you hoped we would be? <laughs> it was in the ship my world used to exile me. In that cramped vessel I was overcome with grief. I had lost my people, my purpose. I was condemned. It's then that I wept, but I've not wept since. Those tears have been replaced with rage. That was the next one. Tell me about the last time you were angry. I think I already have. A fury burns within my breast, nearly always. Hmm. Tell me about the last time you were afraid. You believe that there is anything that I might fear? Isn't there something? If not a threat, then maybe dread? Haven't you ever been scared of anything? I don't know how I can ever relate to him if not. This might be our last chance. Please. There was one thing. Really? I once had a consort who was a woman. Ah. She was beautiful and devoted the whole of her being to me. She became with child. Ah. I know I've told you before that I could not breed. I knew not what to make of this. I felt joy at first, to think I could have an offspring after all. What a wondrous thing. But then the doctors caused me fear. My child was gargantuan inside her. Oh god. They said it might rip her apart and they would both die. I knew a fear that consumed me. At first me. I thought she was just cheating. Where once there'd been joy now was only crippling dread. It was not just the life of this child in jeopardy, but also that of my beloved. I could lose them both. My world would end. I would be destroyed by my grief and my guilt. I had brought this curse on her. I had been her ruin. What happened? The child was cut from her by the doctors. Both she and the infant survived. That's wonderful. So, why are you angry? It wasn't mine. No, well, obviously, yeah, I knew it. This baby was not a miracle, but the spawn of her large lover. Her devotion was false. I'd spent months devastated by fear. That was for a treacherous woman. There, Miguel. Now you know of the one time the great god of Hernomer had known fear. Rexilator! What's caused that smile on your face? That was it. I can finally relate to you. <laughs> Let me just go ahead and turn on the relating switch. It was, it's been an off position this whole time, but you gave me the little kick I needed to turn it on. I'm now relating to you. 
Just like that, like a snap of my finger. You're not some faraway god, you're just like any expecting father. You were scared for your wife and baby. I've been hearing about your legend, your godness, and your strange planet. I couldn't see you past all of that. But now I can. Now... Now I know you're someone I can love. Can you tell us the plan to escape now? Miguel. Other than, I mean, all I know is that we're escaping on a ship and we have to learn how to pilot it, but how are we going to get there? Come into my arms tonight. And let it be a ceremony. A, a ceremony? The ceremony of betting one who is now my consort. <gasps> Will you accept this mantle to be the one at my side? The one I will adore. Yes. Then let it be so. Has it only been a few weeks? I feel like I've been here an eternity. Ever since I became his consort, we've been on a non-stop honeymoon. I've gone from not being able to relate to the guy, to loving the guy. Just thinking about it makes me smile. You said that before you were even his consort. Rin Bagan. Rin? I guess he got out of solitary. You broke up with Rex later? Huh? He left you? No, he eats dinner in our cell most of the time. That is too bad. The f what the F? I thought maybe I could let you live, but since you're still with him, you will die like everyone else. What the? Ren Timmer is about to become a school shooter. What the F? That's what he said. Bah. I'll deal with this. Is there even anything to deal with? Ren can't kill everyone. He apparently tried to kill Maximus, though. That was taken very seriously. He's obviously stronger than I knew about. Someone needs to sleep with Ren Timber. So this is literally some kind of incel thing. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> you know how incels, before they go on school shootings, they publish their manifesto about how women never slept with them, and that's why this is all happening. Well, Rin Timber's about to go on a rampage, and he needs someone to sleep with him or else he's going to do it. Like, what is this? <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, that's how you're taking care of it? He's lashing out due to sexual frustration. Oh god. Maybe Maximus will do it again? Maximus wants nothing to do with him. Uh, why not Visgoth? Visgoth would love to do it. We won't be seeing to it. Good. I'll get Vans to do it. Vans? The matter is settled. Did you tell him to make sure Rin Timber comes? Good point. Vans might not concern himself with that. Then this will be for nothing. Go, go tell him. Uh, okay. Well, I'm going to end this episode here, so thank you all for watching, and on the next time, um, we may have to prevent another shooting from Rin Timber, who knows. <laughs> thank God things went over well this time. Bye, guys.